Good morning. Um, as uh, Reverend Bauman said, my name is Nikki Bass. I'm the executive director of eBase, the East Bay Alliance for a Sustainable Economy, which um, has a very important project called FAME, the Faith Alliance for a Moral Economy. I want to thank you for welcoming me into your church today. Um, this Labor Day weekend, we're actually speaking at about 15 congregations throughout the East Bay. It's part of our annual effort called Labor in the Pulpit, where we lift up the voices and honor the work of low-wage workers in Berkeley as well as other cities throughout the Bay. Um, we normally do have a worker come speak with us in congregations, and I um, apologize because the worker who was scheduled to join us had a last-minute emergency. Um, but I want to take some time to talk with you all about some very important struggles among service sector workers in Alameda County. Um, these are workers who are um, organizing and working to make change to lift up conditions for themselves and their families. And some of you might know that um, in Alameda County there's about 80,000 workers who make the minimum wage of $8.25, uh, $8 an hour rather. And that's only 17000 a year if you happen to be working full time. And as the nation is debating an increase in the minimum wage, we actually have an opportunity right here in Berkeley where the mayor and the city council are considering raising the minimum wage um, to lift up the income levels for folks um, at the lowest um, rungs of the economic ladder, the first time to potentially lift up the minimum wage since 2009. Um, so because we weren't able to bring a worker to your congregation, I wanted to just briefly share the stories of two workers I've had the pleasure of working with over the past year. Um, the first person is a woman named Kelly Curry who lives here in Berkeley. She is a woman who absolutely enjoys cooking and has a dream of becoming a cook. Um, when her, fa her father recently passed away, uh, one of the last conversations they had was um, him encouraging her to follow her passion of cooking. And she's been cooking in kitchens here in Berkeley, most recently with a pizzeria where she felt like um, it was a really good fit because the recipes were really challenging and innovative to her. And she made about $10 an hour cooking. Um, that wasn't quite enough to help support her. And she started uh, supplementing her salary by driving, especially on Fridays and found that um, she had to pay for her own gas, her own insurance, the wear and tear on her car, and the owner said, you know what, you're gonna just make that up on tips. And so she continued to cook, to drive, and found that at the end of the day, um, just relying on tips for the deliveries, she just wasn't able to afford staying at this job, and it really broke her heart. So she's someone who has been continuing to look for the right job in the restaurant industry, and um, more inspiring, she's actually someone who has been at the Berkeley uh, Labor Commission hearings talking about her personal experience as a restaurant worker and advocating that the city raise the minimum wage. Um, some of you might have heard that just on Thursday there was a national strike among fast food workers. Um, my organization was supporting about 100 fast food workers in about 10 cities across the East Bay that walked off the job to demand a living wage and the right to form a union. And I got to meet um, a woman named Shonda who was one of those workers um, who went on strike. She currently works as, at a KFC but she's actually been working in the restaurant industry for about 15 years. Um, you know, unlike the stereotype of um, a teenager who might be working in fast food um, as one of their first jobs, she actually, again, has been in this industry for 15 years and sees it as her, as her career to support her family. And she um, spoke out many times over the course of the fast food strike on Thursday and shared that she um, only makes $8 an hour at her job as a cashier at KFC. Um, and even though she's been asking for full-time work, they've only been giving her about 16 hours a week. She has a young daughter to support, two kids in college. So the way that she's been getting by is relying on public assistance to make ends meet. And these are just two stories of you know, real people, real adults who are working hard, trying to work full time, and trying to make ends meet. And as we consider the story of Jesus the disturber, um, 
You know, I ask all of you to think about workers like these um, when you go out to a restaurant, go out um, for other types of services, because oftentimes workers are not making enough to feed their families. Um, and in closing, I want to invite you to um, pick up a postcard at the information table on the way out. These are postcards to urge the Berkeley City Council and Mayor Bates to raise the minimum wage. Um, currently, San Francisco's minimum wage is 10.55. San Jose just raised theirs to 10, and we have an opportunity here in Berkeley to raise Berkeley's wage um, also to 10.55. And what that would mean for workers is um, up to $5,000 more in their pocket, so that they can make ends meet um, with their families. And as well, um, we've also found that for every dollar. Um, every, every dollar in a raise that a worker earns, that means over $2,000 circulating in the local economy. So we believe this could be um, something positive, not only for workers and their families, but also something positive for our community as well as for local businesses here in Berkeley. So thank you again for welcoming me to your church service today, and I'd be happy to talk with you all and share these postcards afterwards. Thank you.